Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting revision series of the November 2019 Science Paper 2. We have now reached the revision of question B2. And question B2A reads, the table below shows the description of substances A, B, and C. The table below shows the description of substances A, B, and C. Uh, question B2A reads, give the physical state of each of them. Give the physical state of each of them. So they want the physical state of A, the physical state of B, and the physical state of C. And the description of the substance is, the description of substance A is, particles occupy any space available. When we talk about the three states of matter, we know that uh, particles in solids are he held together by very strong intermolecular forces. Thereby, they actually just remain where they are. And the only thing they can do is vibrate. They can't go anywhere. When we look at liquids, liquids can move within the confinements of the liquid. Therefore, they cannot occupy the space provided to them. It's more like you place a liquid in a cup and you, have, you fill it halfway and the liquid miraculously fills up the whole cup. It can't happen. Never. But a gas can do that. So for A, the state of matter where particles occupy any space available is a gas. So A is in gaseous state. So it's gas. A is a gas. B, particles are closely packed. Like I said, it is only in solids where particles are held together by very strong intermolecular forces of attraction. Therefore, the particles are closely packed and can't move about from one point to another. The only movement is vibrations. So, substance B is a solid. Substance C, particles move randomly within the space of the substance. The particles in this state of matter can move from one point to another, but are restricted, can only move within the confinements of the substance. And this can only happen in liquids. So substance C is in liquid state. There we go. A complete filled up table with a total mark of three, one for each. Gas, liquid, gas, solid, liquid. We move on to Roman numeral two. How can substance C attain the structure of substance A? Here we are looking at what is supposed to happen to substance C to turn into, subs into a physical state that is the same as that of substance A. Now, he let's go back. When we look at the table, substance C is in liquid state, substance A is in gaseous state. What it means is that a liquid, this process involves the changing of a liquid to a gas. And we know that the change of state from liquid to gas, we have two processes. One is called evaporation, the other one is called boiling. Now, the difference between the two is that evaporation takes place at any given temperature, while boiling occurs at a specified or at a definite temperature. Therefore, to pick on the best answer for this question, because we have not give, been given any temperature restriction, we will go with evaporation. So the process uh, that enables substance C to attain the same structure as substance A is evaporation. There we go. One mark. Then we go to B. B. Substance B is said to be a pure substance. Give a characteristic which proves that B is a pure substance when melting. Substance B is said to be a pure substance. Give a characteristic which proves that B is a pure substance when melting. Here, we need to prove that B is pure, but 
with a limitation of giving our proof based on the process of melting. Now, we know that uh, when we look at criteria of purity, we've got boiling point as one of the ways in which we can prove that a substance is pure. And we also have melting point as another. Now, for pure substances, pure substances will melt at a fixed or definite temperature. If it was a restriction on boiling point, we would say that uh, a pure substance should boil at a fixed or definite temperature, while an impure substance will melt or boil at a range of temperatures. So the temperature will not be the same for different mixtures. And these, these will help us uh, explain in this question. Now, let's look at melting. Melting, we need to look at melting point. So we are going to say that substance B melts at a definite or fixed temperature. Substance B melts at a definite or fixed temperature. There. This only carries one mark. Now, we have come to the end of this revision series of the question B2. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel, you can give me a thumbs up and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching the video. We meet again when I do a revision of question B3.